Hello there guys, what is going on? Son of Chelsea back here again for another video and now Chelsea's 1920 season is finally complete. It's time to look back at the season, the ups and downs, the highs and lows, take some conclusions from it and move forward to next season. In today's video, I'm going to be reacting to my Chelsea pre-season predictions. I made this video like 12 months ago now, August 2019, before the opening game of the season um, and sort of react to my predictions, how close or how far off I was. But before we get into any of that, I want to ask you guys, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button and a notification bell so you never miss an upload. Also, hit that like button if you're enjoying the content because it helps out the channel as well. I made seven predictions in total, so we're going to go through each one, one by one, and see how close or far off I was. Let's start off with the Premier League. Where did I expect Chelsea to finish in the Premier League in 1920? Let's have a look. Now, there's a lot of debate around this. Us, United, Arsenal, the battle for top four. Can Frank Lampard retain Champions League football? And... I think it'll be close. I think, you know, all of those teams that I've mentioned, you know, us, United and, and Arsenal all have flaws, but I'm just going to be a little bit more realistic. And I think based on the hurdles that Lampard has in his first season and the lower expectations, I'm going to go fifth. So I think it will be a battle that Chelsea will be a part of and can compete with. But I think that just in the end, other teams who've been able to strengthen in other areas to us and uh, the you know, transfer ban, lack of Eden Hazard, and a, a bunch of other factors I think will mean Chelsea will miss out on Champions League football. So I predicted fifth, so I was one off. I underestimated how well Chelsea would do. We did, in the end, get Champions League qualification, which was massive under Frank Lampard this season. 66 points. It was a very low total considering Champions League race. It was a poor Champions League race in that sense, but Chelsea did get there in the end. And I think when I look back at the prediction I made and looking at other predictions videos around that time, I, I think I was being quite positive and optimistic for the season. I saw people putting us at 7th, 8th, as low as 10th, considering the inexperience of Frank Lampard, the young players coming into the team, how untested they were, how would they fare playing for Chelsea, the scrutiny of playing for Chelsea, and as well, of course, the transfer ban, losing Eden Hazard, all these factors uh, meant a lot of people thought that you know Chelsea just weren't going to get Champions League football again. But it shows how well Chelsea have done this season to overcome those expectations. So I'm not too far off. I'm not too embarrassed with this prediction, to be honest. Fifth place, I think for me, I expected more more from Tottenham and Arsenal. I expected them to be in this race and I expected it to be much more tight. Of course, Leicester were the unexpected challengers and uh, were there for a long period of time and then fell away at the end. And of course, Chelsea and Manchester United finally getting those plays on the final day. So I predicted fifth. We finished fourth. I'm happy to be wrong on this one. So that's the first one on the Premier League. Next was the Champions League prediction. Where did I think Chelsea would finish in the Champions League? Let's take a look. Low expectations again will benefit Chelsea in this factor. I do. I think that Lampard with his experience as a player playing for Chelsea on big Champions League nights, big two-legged games against uh, Barcelona uh, down the years, you know, all those famous victories and, you know, the, the Champions League winning run in 2012. I think that experience will help him and as well, being under a manager like Jose in those situations, I think will be really beneficial um, for instructing his players, for understanding what those games mean to not only the players, but also the club and the fans. And I think Stamford Bridge, as has been seen down the years, can become an amazing place on those European nights. And my hope is this season Lampard can cultivate something like that if we can get past the group stage and also get further in and hopefully be able to draw someone like a Real Madrid or a Borussia Dortmund or someone and, and some team, you know, we can even draw Liverpool if we were to get into the quarterfinals. What an amazing uh, tie that would be, uh, again, after all the history and the past in the Champions League. But... I think that Lampard can go far in the Champions League, in my opinion. I just have that sense. I, it may be, it's just, it's more based on emotion. So I predicted the quarterfinal, one off once again, one round off. Of course, uh, last night we finally were knocked out of the Champions League after months of waiting uh, to buy in Munich in the second leg of that round of 16. Ty lost the first leg, 3-0 lost the second leg, 4-1. It would have been interesting to see how Chelsea would have fared, I think, against Atalanta. That's who Valencia got, who finished top of our group. That group itself was very interesting. I mean, the Champions League this year, did feel a bit like a side quest for Chelsea in truth. It felt like a bit of an adventure, a bit of a time for Lampard and his players to sort of test themselves against some really good opposition. I felt there were some really exciting games in that group stage, especially against Ajax, both of those games for different reasons. The first game in Amsterdam was an amazing performance and victory for Chelsea, one of the best performances of the season defensively all round tactically. That was a very good night for Frank Lampard and a big win for his team and for and for Chelsea in general. And then the second game at Stamford Bridge was absolutely mental. That 4-4 
Um, I was there for that game, one of the most ridiculous games of football I've ever witnessed, and I'll never forget being there. It was a special night once again to see Chelsea come back from 4-1 down and the shenanigans of that night as well. Funny as well, narratively, Hakim Ziyech playing for Ajax, playing very well for them. Now he's going to be a Chelsea player next season as well. So playing round of 16, we got humbled by Bayern, um, expectedly really Bayern miles ahead of us, and it shows where Chelsea need to get to in a few years' time. But I think Chelsea next season, let's hope maybe can get to a quarterfinal, maybe even a semi-final if everything comes together with transfers next season. Next was, would Chelsea win a trophy? What did I predict? Yes, I do believe Chelsea can win silverware under Frank Lampard in his first season. I think it's either going to be, say, a League Cup or an FA Cup, probably our most realistic expectations. You know, I think League Cup, as was proven last season, had a great run into the final, unfortunately lost on penalty. So I think Lampard can hopefully do something similar. So I think the overall, I think that's our best chance. And I think it'd be great for instilling a winning mentality into this young group of players that are going to be starting for Lampard this season. And for Chelsea fans as well, a great memory it will be watching Frank Lampard pick up a piece of silverware as Chelsea manager. So I did think we win a trophy. And once again, I was quite close to predicting that. Um, I think most people would have written off Chelsea this season for a trophy. It wasn't really in the ballpark once again. I mean, you sort of, you didn't know what to expect from Chelsea this year. Most years, Chelsea do win a trophy. That's how extraordinary our record is. But I think there was an expectancy once again with Frank Lampard being this uh, transitional season. The, the troubles and, you know, doubts of this season would make winning a trophy a bit unrealistic. But we got to the FA Cup final Final, unfortunately runners up there in the League Cup we got to the fourth round knocked out by Manchester United when we lost to Manchester United continuously and we of course the Super Cup final at the start of the season penalty a penalty shootout defeat to Liverpool heartbreaking uh, game that was right at the start of the season so in truth Chelsea got pretty close to silverware this year when many expected them not to um, and I think it shows that if Chelsea do improve in a variety of areas next year that if Chelsea once again can do similar they can get a trophy next year so once again very close to getting it right but I'm Unfortunately, Chelsea did not pick up any more silverware this season. Next was the top goal scorer. Who did I think would be Chelsea's top goal scorer this season? I personally feel... And once again, I'm going to go out on limb here. I think Tammy Abraham will be Chelsea's top goal scorer. Now, I know the striker position is one that a lot of people are putting Chelsea's maybe upcoming struggles down to. Of course, since Diego Costa's left, we've struggled to replace the goals that he brought to Chelsea and the attributes and, you know, Morata and, you know, Higuain last season. We've struggled and all the three strikers that we have um, all have their flaws and all have their concerns and, and doubts. But I do think Abraham... With the service from Alexa Barkley, who's been brilliant in preseason, Loftus Cheek when he comes back, Hudson Odoi when he comes back, and uh, Pulisic. I think the formation of the 4 2 3 1 is going to allow a lot of attacking players to get into the box. We've been great at creating chances over preseason, and I hope that continues into the season. And I think that with his record at uh, Aston Villa last year, really good in the box. And if he's more clinical, I think he can get a good goal return uh, for Chelsea. And I think that'd be a brilliant season for him. You know, even something like a 12 to 15 goal ratio, I think would be brilliant. And if we can get goals from other places in the team, it could be a very successful season for Lampard. But I think Abraham, I'd love to see him start the season. and I'd love to see him get a lot of goals, get a lot of confidence, really grow and get support and trust from the supporters who do have doubts about him and his age. So finally, I get one right, Tammy Abraham. I predicted Tammy Abraham. I'm really happy about this prediction because I remember there were lots of doubts about Tammy Abraham and as well, depending on who you thought Chelsea were going to play as their main striker this year. I mean, pre-season didn't really give you a massive indication of who Frank was going to go for. I mean, he played a lot with Olivier Giroud, even Michy Batshuayi was playing a lot at the time. It was hard to really tell who Frank would pick as his first choice striker. But for a majority of the season, at least half of it, Tammy was the first choice striker. I predicted 15 goals. He was That was spot on for Premier League goals, but in the end, he actually got 18 goals for the season, which was really impressive for Tammy. Yes, he's had injury problems, form problems, a young player growing and learning at Chelsea. He's had those struggles and had to come through those like a lot of the young players playing for Frank Lampard this year. Very much he was the striker in the first period of the season. We relied on his goals in that first period of the season where he scored the majority of them. And then in the second half of the season, we relied on the experience and brilliance of Olivier. Giroux. Um, so very much it was half and half in that sense. But 18 goals, two away from matching Diego Costa's first season at Chelsea, I think is very impressive and shows the quality of Tammy Abraham. That If he grows and gets better over a number of years, he can improve on that record uh, potentially next season. And I wouldn't write him off playing a lot for Frank Lampard next season. So I'm really happy getting this prediction right. Tammy Abraham as top goal scorer. Next was player of the season. Now, player of the season for Chelsea officially has not been named yet. There's a lot of debates, but I think, you know, depending on who you're picking, there's a lot of names already out there. 
there the obvious candidates. Who did I think would be Chelsea's player of the season? I'm going to go with one that I don't think many will go with, and that is Ruben Loftus-Cheek. Now, of course, he is injured, and it's going to take him a while to get back into full fitness, get back into the team, and also, you know, we've, we've seen with injuries before, it does have, obviously, a detrimental effect. But I think Loftus Cheek has come back from injuries before, and the impact he had in a short space of time, really, in the first team under Sarri last year, I think proved to me how crucial he can be for Chelsea. He is a Rolls Royce midfielder, and I think his time at Crystal Palace and his development in terms of game awareness and intelligence on the pitch really has, for me, put him out there as one of Chelsea's most crucial players. And I think in that midfield, the likes of Jorginho and Kante, I think we've got a lovely balance and I think his physical presence, running with the ball, his skill, also a knack for goals, which Chelsea need. And hopefully, you know, with the likes of Barkley doing more in preseason amount as well, get more goals from central midfield. And, and Ruben definitely uh, showed that at the back end of last season. And I think he's going to come back. He's going to get back into the team. So yeah, this was probably my worst prediction for the season. Uh, Ruben off the sheet, probably my bias for Ruben uh, got the better of me here. And I think, you know, his injury, of course, you know, at the time he was expected that he could be back by like October, November time, which, you know, even then, you know, based on the extent to the injury Ruben had, I think that was unrealistic on my part. Um, I think I was very much influenced by the end of his season under Sarri. And he didn't return until June post lockdown of course we didn't know about the coronavirus and what was going to happen there the massive gap he could have returned earlier than that if the season was played normally but still um, it took him so long to get back and even when he has got back you've seen how much that injury has affected him very much next season can be his season to get back into the full flow of things and get back to full fitness um, but yeah I was way off here I mean in terms of player of the season Ruben's not going to be one of the names because he just hasn't played as much as expected next was young player of the season and um, there's a lot of names for this this year because of Frank Lamb Pause Youth Revolution. There's a lot of names you could pick here. Um, of course, once again, picking this right at the start of the season before a board being kicked. So, who did I think would be young player of the season? I'm going to go with Hudson Odoi, just like Loftus Sheik, even though he is injured. Hudson Odoi will be back sooner. And I think when I compare him to other players, young, young players within the squad, I think Hudson Odoi is likely to get the most game time when he comes back. I think he will very quickly slot into that right wing position like he was under Sarri before he got injured. And I think he, his quality, his raw talent and ability that is exactly what Chelsea need. Chelsea need unpredictability after what uh, after losing Hazard. And Hudson-Odoi, of course, is not at that level yet. And of course, it's only potential at the moment. But with more game time, with more trust from a manager, um, I think he's going to grow and grow and grow. And I think that's going to be so crucial for him this season. So once again, quite wrong on this. Didn't return till late September. Got re-injured. Pulisic um, was very much the form player for Chelsea at the back end of the season as well in that position. Willian had a really strong season for Frank Lampard and very much Frank Lampard relied on him a lot during the season. Even Mason Mount playing out wide a lot of the times as well. Pedro getting minutes. I think Callum, it was a very difficult season for him. You know, I think when he returned from his injury I think I was very hopeful he could have a really strong season but form has been a big problem for him as well so he's had those struggles this year I hope very much like Ruben with a full year of fitness he can get better next year still a very young player but you know these two predictions way off for me probably the worst I could have made uh, for this season and very much teaches me a lesson that you know if a player's injured going into the season don't pick them for player of the season based on the extent of their injury so now my last prediction uh, my final prediction I made in that video way back in August was a surprise player of the season a player that many Many people didn't expect to have great seasons but would go on to be an essential part of the first team squad who did I think would be that player it's for me Mateo Kovacic a player who many of us have doubted uh, whether we should have signed him he was our one big signing of the summer and um, because of course he was on loan for Real Madrid last season He's looked really good in preseason. He's looked really promising. Lampard has moved him back for a deeper lying midfield role alongside Jorginho. And him and Jorginho has worked really well. Of course, there is some concerns defensively there. But I think him and, and playing at a, a, a deeper role where he isn't expected to, to be that box-to-box -box or at least attacking midfielder, um, I think has helped him. And, you know, he's technically astute as a player. I think that's never been in question. So I think I'm happy to end on this one, to be honest. Mateo Kovacic, in a lot of people's eyes, I think the majority of Chelsea fans' eyes, will be seen as player of the season. Um, he has been brilliant and transformed under Frank Lampard, really. Uh, very much felt like a one-dimensional player under uh, Maurizio Sarri, but under Frank Lampard, he's just been a different animal for Chelsea. He really has. And I think, you know, he's been really impressive. And consistency has been the thing that I think has been so impressive about Mateo Kovacic. And a team that's been very inconsistent this year and has been very uncertain, I think uh, Mateo Kovacic has added that consistency of performance that probably will edge him out for player of the season. I think his press resistance, having 
doing that to get through the press, to get through challenges, to make tackles. Um, he's one of the best tacklers, I think, in the Chelsea squad as well. Yes, you could throw out Amy Dunn, score a ton of goals or make a ton of assists for Chelsea. But I think when you watch Chelsea, the elegance of Kovacic, when Kovacic plays well, Chelsea usually play well. I think for me, the big thing about Kovacic is the fluidity of him. Getting the ball from defence to midfield to attack, getting through that midfield press, I think is a big thing for Kovacic and adds a quality to the midfield that Chelsea just don't have. Maybe we could add to it for next season. But I think Kovacic will still be a player relied upon by Frank Lampard next season. I think he's a player you need in the modern game and he's very much impressed me this year. And I hope he does get player of the season because I think he very much deserves it based on his consistent performances from August to August, basically how long this season has been for Chelsea. Um, but yeah, Mateo Kovacic, surprise of the season. Very happy to end on this one considering this prediction. So uh, yeah, that was my last prediction. Mateo Kovacic, surprise player of the season. So that is it for my 1920 prediction reaction uh, video. I have to say I'm pleased in general by my predictions. I mean, they're not too bad in truth. I think that the two that are the worst are my player of the season predictions uh, for young uh, player of the season and player of the season. I mean, that's something I have to learn for next season. But I'm pleased getting Mateo Kovacic right for uh, surprise of the season. A top goal scorer, Tammy Abraham. A lot of positivity there considering the season. And in truth, the other three winning a trophy, the Champions League prediction and my Premier League prediction are not too far away there. So let's be honest, in the comments, please let me know your predictions. How wrong were you based on your preseason predictions for Chelsea this season? No shame. Game. be honest in the comments we can have that discussion there but thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video if you did enjoy hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you never miss an upload follow me on twitter at son of chelsea have a great day and i'll see you again mm -hmm.